Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, your host, Christopher Corey with Shadows Tech Lab. So I wanted to go over uh, media servers. I've been using Plex. I've used everything in between for numerous years. Uh, I've been using Plex probably for four or five years now. I've had Plex Pass for a really long time. Uh, it's a great product, very stable. Uh, I keep going back to it no matter everything else that I try. Uh, currently, I have been uh, giving another go at testing alternatives. Obviously, I have Plex, and it's going to take quite a bit to get me away from that just because it's a great product. It does well with my large library that I have. Uh, with that being said, I have been um, testing another product called Jellyfin, which it's looking pretty good on the uh, platform server side of things. It's doing quite well, and I've been quite pleased with that. Uh, the client side can definitely use a little bit of work. It's a little bit newer, so there isn't as many um, supported platforms at this point in time. Now, on the uh, Jellyfin server side, there's actually quite a bit of options. So you can do Docker. Um, go ahead and manually do Docker through yourself, or if you're using uh, myself, uh, I have Unraid. So I'm using Jellyfin in a community app store Docker container. Uh, if you're using Unraid, uh, FreeNAS, a lot of the other alternatives, they do have their own applications already pre-built in the application stores for those particular platforms. So definitely check that out and look that way. Um, if you're doing Docker and just manually um, using like Composer, there, you definitely have the option to go through GitHub or through um, the documentation from Jellyfin, which does have stable nightly, and you can also go to the Docker Hub. Um, it does have Debian and Ubuntu um, repositories that you can get. There also is Arch Linux support, uh, Fedora and CentOS support, uh, just generic. Linux, there's Mac, and there's also Windows and portable options. Now, keep in mind, this is for the server side, not the client side. Now, if you're looking at the client side, um, you can definitely go ahead and there is Android support. So if you're using like your phone or a tablet or an Android based um, like thumbstick, you do have the option to do that. Otherwise, if you're using like uh, Chromecast or any of those other alternatives, what you can do is you can uh, low, sideload Kodi, and then you can use Kodi to basically as a uh, front end for the Jellyfin um, client side, which I haven't tested everything on the client side. I've only been working on the um, server side of things. I'm still getting things set up and testing, so I can't give full impressions on it as of yet, but I will do another video once I have more testing done on that. Uh, it does have Windows and it does have Raspberry Pi support. Um, it's a little clunky to get going. Um, in order to install it through Windows, you do have to do a little bit of powder, powder shell, uh, excuse me, PowerShell with uh, using like Git and then cloning the repository and then opening it through NPM. NPM installs going that way. Um, now there is uh, Chrome extensions that you can get which uh, are definitely a little bit uh, easier. Um, there is um, support for that on GitHub. I will leave a link in the description for Jellyfin and for the client documentation. Uh, obviously your mileage is going to vary depending on what it is that you are using. Now I have Actually, on the server side of things, I've been pretty impressed. Uh, one of the things that I think Jellyfin does a little bit better with is it does have a lot more options on um, transcoding, transcoding performance, and uh, what it supports codec wise. You do have a little bit more refinement in there, which I can definitely show you a little bit of that on what I have installed with mine. And let's see here. Now, one of the things that I haven't manually tested yet, because I'm still getting support and getting things set up on the server side of things, is I do want to test performance um, outside of my network 
obviously it's going to run great inside of my network because I have a pretty good network layout and my server support to actually add hardware is pretty reasonable. I mean, it's actually more than reasonable. I've got dual Xeon set up, so obviously I'm not short on power. Uh, with that being said, I will go ahead and get in and I can show you around a little bit and we can see uh, what's going on. Give me just a second to log in. One sec, I'm just getting logged into my Unride so I can show you. So this is the main screen that you'll see once you log in and uh, obviously when you first install it you won't have any media you'll need to point to your directories and then it will take a while to install obviously it was with me having such a large library that took an extremely long time obviously your mileage is going to vary with that i'll show you the dashboard which is uh, pretty interesting um one of the things that uh, it does have as well is it does have live TV support if you have like a capture card or something of that nature. It will definitely uh, show that for you. So running tasks, um, obviously this has scheduled tasks. It will scan your media every so often depending on what you have that set to. Under general, you can go ahead and do your server name. Um, Preferred language, uh, cache path, which is where um, you can do any special um, paths if you want to have uh, images for like the uh, metadata, things of that nature. You can have a login disc disclaimer if you want branding. Um, you can definitely do custom CSS, uh, HTML coding if you wanted to change your uh, look. Um, you can go ahead and create different users that can log in. Obviously, I just have myself right now. Um, this is where you would basically would set up and add your libraries. So you would go here. The content type, is it a book, is it photos, music, movies, etc. Um, display, if you go over to advanced and you start adding, so it gives you a lot more options. Another thing that I do like is it gives you a little bit more customization with your library content. So you can get preferred language, um, country, and then any uh, special season display names that you want to include. You can also have it uh, prefer embedded titles over file names. So if you have like some weird file name you haven't gone through and uh, customized or used a program because sometimes when you download movies or Media, it will come through as a weird file name, so it won't pick up things correctly. You can definitely change that there. I do have a video, um, it's called FileBot, that you can use in order to customize and get everything named properly so it imports correctly. I do have a video that you can check out about that, so do definitely check that out. Um, obviously, depending on if this is TV or movies, would depend on what metadata downloader you want to use. So if it's TV, obviously you would probably want to do TVDB. Movies, you can have the movie open database, uh, IMDb, you can add a bunch of different ones in here. Um, do you want to have the formats saved for your metadata? Uh, fetcher settings, 
that you can do banners. Um, there, there's actually a lot more customizing you can do when it comes to metadata. I think it does handle metadata a lot better than Plex. Also transcoding as well, you definitely have a lot more options, which I will go over that. Obviously I'm not gonna add anything because that takes a while. Uh, this is what I wanted to go over, which I definitely do like. So depending on your hardware, um, AMD, Intel, and depending on what CPUs you have, if you're doing Intel, uh, you can definitely, if of course, if your CPU has the ability, depending on what it is that you purchased, you can do Intel QuickSync, which is basically transcoding using the CPU hardware built in for transcoding. Uh, AMD has its own version. There's also API, and then there is uh, NVIDIA NVSync, which you basically you would be doing GPU transcoding at the, that point. And then, of course, you can enable decoding for a lot more um, encoders, codec support, so H.264, um, HVAC, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, VHC-1. If you have any questions about that, you can definitely look those up to find out what those containers are and how they work. Um, you can also do transcoding threading count, so you can have it set to auto, or depending on, of course, what CPU you have, how many CPUs you have, how many threads you have, you can um, definitely get a lot more refining with that. Audio boosting. Um, if it's H.264 or 265, you can do presets, so you can leave it as auto, which I'm kind of playing with that. Uh, obviously, if you start going faster or ultra-fast, um, that's going to start to bogging down the CPU or the graphics card, depending on what encoding you were using. You can also have um, subtitles extracting, which I'm still playing with that as well. And then you can throttle transcoding. So if the transcode or remux gets fast enough for current ahead, it will basically, um, it can help or it can hinder your uh, video as it's going. So if you have problems with that, you can turn off and on throttle transcoding. Of course, your mileage will vary depending on your build, your codec, um, what video, how the quality, etc. If you want to know more about that, you can definitely look up Plex and what it needs and what it for various hardware. I do have a video on that as well. Um, activity, basically whatever activity, so if you've made any changes, things of that nature. You can have this set up as a basically offline network DL DLNA, so it can basically pick it up and use it to browse and play content. Like I said, it does have a live TV, TV section. Um, obviously, I don't use that myself because I don't have any capture cards, so I can't speak to how good that is. I don't use that either with Plex either. It does have the ability to do DVR with live recording. Uh, the networking is kind of about the same as Plex. Uh, basically, you, depending on your network scheme, you need to make sure that you have the um, HTTP port, so whatever port that the server will log in to. So if you're using public, and if it's using HTTP or HTTPS, um, one of the nice things too that uh, I like about this and one of the drawbacks that I find to Plex is Plex doesn't have two-factor authentication, which in today's world, that's kind of a sin, if you ask me. That's one drawback to Plex is there is no second authentication out of the box. There are things you can do for alternatives, but those are third party. It's not supported. It's not something that they do. So you're kind of on your own on setting that up. I'm not saying you can't, it's just something they don't support, which natively, I think that's a drawback and that's something that Plex needs to fix. The community has asked about that for a long time and it just hasn't happened, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot more out of the box when it comes to Plex compared to uh, Plex to Jellyfin. Jellyfin has a lot more plugin support when it comes to notifications. Uh, obviously, you can do notifications through like webhooks using Discord, things of that nature, but I think there's a lot more out of the box with Jellyfin that you can do compared to Plex. 
Um, uh, there is more plugins that you can do. Uh, one of the things Plex killed off um, having channels. So yes, you could do the third party not supported Plex plugins, but a lot of those have been killed off and they're not really technically supported anymore. They do kind of somewhat work. Mileage varies with that depending on which version you're using and how often you update. Uh, I don't really mess with it anymore because it kind of became a pain in the butt. Uh, personal experience, everyone's mileage will vary. With Jellyfin, I do have audio uh, DB, which gives you uh, audio information, uh, music brain, uh, playback reporting, so you can get a lot more reporting out of the box with this. Obviously, you can use PlugPy, that's Wajula. There's quite a few different alternatives out there, but this does it out of the box without having to have a third party do your reporting and graphing for you, and it does have track it support. Now, out of the box, um, when it comes to scheduled tasks, obviously I do have a couple of maintenance things and a couple of things set up. Um, reporting, uh, this is really neat, and one of the features that I do like about Jellyfin is, like I said, it does have better reporting capabilities out of the box without having to go to another third party application, open another page which you were probably looking at anyways, but it still does this out of the box, which is really nice. Now, obviously I haven't done a lot of playing with this yet. I've been busy doing other things and getting more into Twitch. So I haven't really had a lot of time to mess with that. Uh, the basic overviews at this point, uh, basically where I'm standing, obviously I'm still using Plex. It's my go-to. Um, it works. I have a lot of people that I share with, so it's not something I really want to mess with. I am messing with Jellyfin on the side. Um, initial thoughts? Plex and Jellyfin, the clients are both really solid. Well, excuse me, not the clients, the server side are really... Uh, it's really quite solid. Uh, Jellyfin, uh, one drawback that I find is the client support is not quite as there compared to Plex. Plex has been around longer, so it has a better client support in my opinion. Jellyfin is definitely getting there. Obviously, there's alternatives you can use going through like Cody as your front end. Uh, personally, I don't like Cody as much. That's a personal opinion. Everyone has their own opinions and they're entitled to that. Uh, besides that, I'll do another video later on once I have more testing that I can do and more data that I can provide you guys. But that's a basic kind of overview at this point in time. If you have any other further questions, definitely feel free to reach out to me. Make sure to like and subscribe on here and my Twitch channel. And if you have any other questions, reach out to me on my uh, social media. Uh, besides that, I will uh, let you guys go. Have a good day and uh, be safe.